Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Air combat has developed to the point where technology has made modern fighter pilots air battle managers. With modern air weapons and integrated systems, today's fighter pilots are expected to see air combat maneuvering or dogfight situations rarely. Today, we take a closer look at the seemingly chaotic process of fighter pilots managing the airspace during combat. Air warfare has gone from pilots armed with pistols and biplanes to unmanned combat air vehicles, or UCAVs. Not only do we have warplanes that integrate their systems with other manned aircraft, but we have combat aircraft that integrate their systems with unmanned missile carriers and fuel carriers. Red Flag, held biannually at Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada, is the ultimate aerial warfare training exercise for the United States military and some of its allies. This simulation of real-world scenarios promotes international cooperation among allies, prepares crews for combat situations, and tests the readiness of their high-tech aircraft in intense but safe conditions. The reason we need to train in a realistic environment is that uh, we need to prepare our pilots, our air crew, our uh, space operators, our cyber operators, for their combat missions. And the only way to do that is to train them in a realistic environment. Red Flag started in 1975, and it also often tests the abilities of air crews to scramble. During scramble exercises, pilots are expected to be airborne from a relaxed demeanor to fully combat ready in as little as five minutes. However, that time will differ from squadron to squadron. Five minutes is very little time if one considers what needs to happen in that time. Once the scramble alarm has been sounded, the pilots should already be in a state of readiness. That's because putting on their flight suits, G-suits, and utility vests would take too long. They would also have to spend time testing their oxygen masks for leaks and performing other checks on their equipment, which takes time. Depending on the airbase, the air crews are transported to their aircraft shelters by means of dedicated airbase transport. By this time, the ground crews had already started getting the appointed aircraft ready for takeoff, awaiting engine startup by the pilot. Air and ground crews pride themselves in being able to get airborne within the safest and most effective times. By the time the pilots have ascended the entry ladder, the aircraft is already fueled and armed, ready for the flight. Crew chiefs and pilots work together to get the fighter started up in the quickest possible time. Once the pilot is ready, he starts the taxi process to get his takeoff position. Shit. 
At this point, the air traffic controllers or ATCs coordinate the sequence of takeoffs. Once the crew chief is happy that the pilot is clear of any obstruction, they hand it over to the pilot. Once the fighter is airborne, the timer is stopped. Now the pilot receives information about the likely position of their adversaries. Although beyond visual range or BVR engagements are expected, the pilots may need to perform air combat maneuvering or dogfighting maneuvers. For that reason, training in air combat has to include air combat maneuvering engagements. Fighters are developed with bubble canopies so that the pilot has a greater range of vision. Enemy fighters, however, attack from outside the sun where they can't be seen or may come from low and behind the fighter in question. The object of dogfighting training is to gain a gun or short-range air-to-air missile kill. During training, these kills are confirmed by the gun camera on the aircraft. Maneuvering their aircraft effectively is crucial to this kind of flying. Exercises such as low-level canyon flying help in that respect. Canyon flying, also known as low-level flying, is a vital training method used by the United States Air Force and Navy. This ability allows pilots to fly at extremely low altitudes, often navigating tight turns and narrow passages, like canyon flying. Canyon flying training is primarily used to assist military pilots in evading radar detection, and it is frequently used in reconnaissance missions and airstrikes. These types of exercises also help to increase the pilot's confidence and the esprit de corps of an air unit. Discipline and esprit de corps are crucial for flying in U.S. military aerial display units. The United States Navy's Flight Demonstration Squadron is known as the Blue Angels. They were founded in 1946, representing a 75-year legacy of precision aerobatics and naval aviation excellence. The Blue Angels inspire a culture of excellence and service by performing death-defying aerial stunts, tactical maneuvers, and high-speed, low-altitude formations for millions of spectators annually. Aside from thrilling performances, they play an essential role in recruitment, morale, and demonstrating the capabilities of the United States Navy. Being a member of the Blue Angels is a high honor, reflecting the pinnacle of aerial warfare expertise and service dedication. Many or most of the dogfighting techniques and tactics were developed by pilots during the World Wars.
One of the best fighters from World War II was the P-51 Mustang, which saw action right into the Korean War. The Mustang made use of lessons learned from dogfighting and incorporated the first bubble canopy of that era. Allison engines fitted to the first Mustangs were underpowered at high altitudes. For that reason, the Rolls-Royce V1650 Merlin engine used by the Supermarine Spitfire was used in the P-51, giving it a top speed of 440 miles per hour. Aircraft like the P-51 Mustang do not fall under the classification of any generation of fighters, since it was not a jet fighter. The site of the F-35 Lightning II, TF-51 and P-51 Mustang soaring together to commemorate the history and evolution of U.S. Air Force air power was witnessed during Heritage Flight 2017. North Americans who designed the P-51 built an influential aircraft with their first design effort. Although the Mustang was not quite the leap ahead that the F-35 is, it represents a design that was only retired in 1984 by some air forces. Air forces tend to buy combat aircraft which have been proven but air shows are usually where air power is displayed for the first time and interest is generated. The Paris Air Show is seen as one of the premier air shows in Europe. It's also the oldest air show with its first show in 1909. Not only are the latest technology and air design displayed for potential buyers, but it is also where the public can view the latest aircraft and their techniques. Among the best competitors in the field of aircraft technologies is Airbus. The company is responsible for some of the best aircraft designs including the A400M Atlas turboprop military transport aircraft. During unrestricted takeoff, the aircraft uses all of its available power to take off and gain altitude as quickly as possible. This technique is usually used when there is a potential threat or when this flight profile is part of the mission parameters. The A400M covers a gap in the market where an aircraft smaller than the C-17 Globemaster III but larger than the C-130 Hercules was required. It's also the first European military transport designed and built in Europe. Atlas can transport 81,600 pounds of cargo and has an aerial refueling probe for extended range missions. Not only have combat aircraft undergone a major technological boost in just over a century, but so did military transport aircraft, such as the A400M Atlas. With this, air forces have found better ways to conduct air war, where large-scale exercises such as Red Flag prepare fighter pilots for future wars. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.